It's just a really unique place, special place. There's no other in town. You know, this is the only underground cave lit for Christmas in, in the area, so we have a really unique spot here. And uh, it's just beautiful. It, we have Christmas music playing and, and uh, pictures with Santa and the Grinch. And, and uh, it's just everybody, it really resonates with everybody. Cherokee Caverns is located in between Knoxville and Carnes in the Solway area. Off, we're on Oak Ridge Highway. My name's Mike Whidbey. I'm one of the managers, protectors, guardians of Cherokee Caverns, uh, along with my family. And we've been here since 89, trying to protect the cave and, and open it to the public and sharing it. Well, we, this is our sixth year doing Christmas in the cave and we put about 40,000 lights all around and we've got pictures with Santa and we've got the Grinch running around aggravating people and um, we give out candy canes and peppermints and just a really unique place to spend Christmas. We've got a really good group of volunteers that help us and we, we spend three or four weeks putting lights up and fixing lights and decorating for Santa. When I'm decorating or, you know, we're, we're real careful how we decorate. You know, we can't be touching the formations. The, the oil off your hands will disturb how the formation grows. So we have to be real careful how we hang our lights. And I'm always seeing new things that, that I hadn't seen in the years past. And we have a really unique selection of different formations that are really rare. They just soak it all in. It's They come in and they're just amazed. It's like a wonderland with all the different formations and we really light it up at Christmas so it stands out real good. It's, it's more lit than any other event that we do so Christmas is a perfect time to see all the unique formations lit up. When we host Christmas in the cave, we, we hope to see about 2,000 people. People right around a mile away from here says, I've wanted to see that cave for 50 years. And they're just amazed when they come in and see all the decorations. It's a special place and I'm carrying on what my dad started in, in 89, protecting the cave. And it's really beautiful. It's there's not very many caves in Knox County that are decorated like Cherokee Caverns. And uh, it's got some real rare formations and uh, it's an ancient drainage to the Carnes Valley. And it went into the Clinch River, which is over in Solway here. And when the cave was formed about 400 million years ago, it drained and then started forming all the stalactites and stalagmites. And uh, the cave has a lot of real rare formations to this area. There's stalactites, stalagmites, anthrodite needles, halegtites, which is a formation that defies gravity. And we've got some really unique formations for this area. My dad's the matriarch here. It was about 1854, Robert Cragington was up on the hill hunting one day and uh, saw fog coming up out of the rocks, uh, moved the rocks around and explored the cave. But we know early American Indians got in here before he did. And, uh, and then Robert Cragington's daughter, Margaret, uh, Cragington Gentry is the one that opened the cave to the public in 1929. Well, the cave would uh, would be open and then uh, would be closed uh, and uh, reopened under new names. It has had eight names. It uh, first opened to the public in 1929 under the name Gentry's Cave. Uh, the cave, however, was first discovered by American Indians, uh, possibly a few hundred or even a few thousand years ago when the first people came into the valley. Uh, the, uh, this cave has opened and closed eight different times under eight different names. 
uh, the current name Cherokee Caverns is the eighth name the cave has had. One of the most colorful names is Atomic Caverns, named after a formation in the cave that in 1948 uh, folks thought that uh, that formation looked like the bottom of the famous Bikini Atomic Test on the island of Bikini. So the cave was named Atomic Caverns. I uh, first came to the cave uh, in, uh, in the late 1970s when the restaurant was here. And uh, I was chairman of my caving club, the East Tennessee Grotto, a chapter of the National Speleological Society. And I used to hold my, my monthly meetings over here at the cave we would eat dinner in the restaurant and go back beyond where they were taking the public. And it's where I conducted my monthly meetings. And then in October 1980, they had a uh, fire in the kitchen of the restaurant. And uh, the, uh, they had a deep well cooker that caught on fire and it burnt the restaurant the gift shop and a little stone house, everything was destroyed. And from 1980 to 1989, the cave was being vandalized. Vandals came into the cave, uh, trashed the passageways, and um, they, uh, they even brought a 30-30 rifle in here and shot cave formations they couldn't reach. In the mid-1980s, I found just handfuls of 30-30 cartridges down through the main passageway of the cave. People were coming in, they were throwing rocks up and broken, breaking the stalactites and uh, soda straws. Uh, they were doing uh, uh, a lot of damage to the cave. The, uh, uh, the, when I started protecting the cave, I filled up two construction dumpsters with trash out of the cave and off the property. Nature can't even repair the broken uh, cave formations. The growth rate of cave formations in this cave is about a cubic inch every 100 to 125 years. So uh, there are formations in this cave that have been forming for more than a million years. In 1989, I took it on as a conservation project to try to protect the cave. I built the highway gate down on the highway and I uh, put a temporary gate over the mouth of the cave and started opening the cave up uh, about five times a year, uh, particularly at Halloween and Christmas. I grew up caving. He drug me all over the plateau as a kid and, and we, uh, we just fell in love with caves and I got the bug like he did and, and uh, the cave just needs to be protected. All caves need to be protected and uh, there's no sense in vandalizing something that's been thousands of years in the making. So uh, if we don't do it, we, we don't know who would or what would happen to it. So, so we're gonna stay here and educate the public about our underground world and, and keep protecting it. In Knox County, we have 171 known caves. Uh, in Tennessee, we have 10,034 known caves. That's more than any other state uh, in the United States. Most of the caves in Tennessee are in limestone. We have limestone caves and sandstone caves and boulder caves, uh, but this is a dolomite cave. This cave is formed in Copper Ridge Dolomite. Uh, dolomite is uh, a, a rock very similar to limestone, but it has magnesium in it, and the magnesium makes the rock harder. So. Dolomite caves you don't usually find with such a wide variety of cave formations. We have 15 different kinds of formations that have occurred in this cave. The lagtites form off of soda straws and uh, a uh, 
A stalactite is easily to remember. Stalactites are holding on tight to the ceiling. Stalagmites, which grow from the floor up, stalagmites might grow to the ceiling. So you have stalactites coming down from the ceiling and stalagmites coming up. And the, the walls can also have a flowstone on them. Flowstone is another formation uh, of how the rock forms. But we have uh, anthrodite needles, or another formation in a cave. Anthrodite needles are quite rare and usually only form in dolomite caves, not in limestone caves. Well, the cave is 58 degrees year round, so when it's 20 degrees outside, it feels really good in here. And uh, in the summertime, when it's 90 degrees, it's still 58 degrees in here. So it, it's, you get the best of both worlds, natural air conditioning and natural heat. We have so many people that come out after our Christmas event and they'll tell, they'll tell some of our volunteers that this was the most special Christmas thing they've ever done and they plan on making it a tradition. And we have, we've had a lot of families come back every year and say this is our tradition and we love it. Well, I enjoy caves as natural formations. Uh, the uh, caves to me are very unique the way they form, uh, the size of them, uh, the location of them. Uh, the, uh, it's just sort of a special place. And this cave here, Cherokee Caverns, is uh, uh, being in a dolomite cave, uh, it makes it very unusual. And I'm just carrying on what he started here. That's a passion, and, and what other cool place like this can you go and hang out at? I mean, it's, it, it's a really fascinating place, and, and uh, it's just in my blood. <laughs>